Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Rogue Wave podcast, the frequency for all things pop culture and the disruptors behind it. We talk comics, movies, TV, and pop culture every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern on Facebook.com slash Rogue Wave podcast and Twitch.tv slash Rogue Wave podcast. Download it immediately following the live stream on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, anywhere podcasts are available. We are there. Search Rogue Wave podcast or go to roguewavepodcast.com to subscribe and uh, give us a follow. Give us a subscribe. Uh, new content every Wednesday. Tonight, Bill and Ted face the music trailer, truth or trash, DC Ditches Diamond, and Batman has a baby. No, seriously, he does. I'm your host, Michael Dolce, as always, joined by my cohort in crime, Mr. Hassan Godwin. How you doing, sir? Yeah. It's been uh, it's been quite the uh, 2020. Uh, I mean, I'll I'll uh, I'll say I'll say for yeah, that we're halfway through it. We're halfway through it. Yeah, I mean, you we are, and um, interesting to see what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks with the protests and and how COVID shakes out, and in relation to uh, getting you know back into conventions. Uh, New York Comic Con. Heavy Con's. outbreaks in Arizona and uh, and yeah, yeah, and Ohio. So, I mean, like, you know, maybe the from a couple wave. of weeks ago, before you know, when everybody was partying. So the so that's that's payback for that. And so now the <laughs> protests are going to get, you know, I mean, they got a better shot maybe because they're outside. Yeah, you know, according to uh, CDC and the uh, and, and WHO. It mitigates it, you know, being outside mitigates right. the, the spread a little bit, but uh, who knows? We yeah. don't know enough yet. In, so we'll again, see. we are a, uh, or at least we try to be a distraction from all the stuff that's going on outside, but this particular bit of interest for us was, again, a story we did a couple shows ago where we talked about Comic-Con in, in Florida that's gonna, actually going to go on, and, you know, it's, it's very interesting to see, you know, the ramifications of all this stuff in relation to the reopening and whether or not uh, we will have a New York Comic Con, we will have, you know, uh, anything this year. Uh, news changes on a daily basis. So, you know, who knows? But uh, like I said, we hope we can entertain you for the next hour or so. All right. Shifting to this, we do this every week. We go through the rogue rage, all the rage in the pop culture world, and talk about seismic shifts. Uh, it was Friday, it was announced. DC cuts ties with Diamond Comic Distributors. Now, it's fun because, well, okay, it's, I don't want to call it fun, but it's fun because it's comic book news, right? And normally we we're talking had about that in a while. and things like that, but this one is so huge in the ramifications uh, to the comics, which will then have ramifications to, uh, you know, the movies and, and whatnot going forward in, in some way, shape, or form, uh, that everyone's been talking about this. Uh, it's a big deal. This is a uh, Hollywood reporter first, I think reported it, or I think several outlets did. Um, you know, the publisher will no longer distribute through industry leader in comics distribution. Uh, the announcement came via an email to retailers sent Friday. They're going to be fulfilled by lunar distribution and UCS comic distributors, which uh, they, they actually created during the COVID crisis when diamond, uh, you know, stopped shipping new comics to comic book stores due to the pandemic. Uh, we recognize that to many of you, this may seem like a momentous decision. However, we can assure you this change in DC's distribution plan has not been made lightly. It follows a long period of thought and consideration. It's in line with DC's overall strategic vision intended to improve the health of and strengthen the direct market. A lot of people want to get in on this in terms of you know, what it means. Uh, but the first thing that came out of this was, of course, all the retailers started complaining. Uh, like really started complaining and uh, so much so that mile high comics did a hashtag, did a sale, a 50% sale. DC sucks. Uh, many, many retailers took to, um, you know, Rosansky, Chuck Rosansky from mile high comics being, I think the lead one that everyone was kind of quoting of, of how poor a decision this was on DC's part. Do you think this is a decision, a bad decision on DC's part to do this? For uh, the ramifications to the to the industry, not even a little bit, right? Like, I mean, look, you can't have you can't run a country a uh, country, you can't run a company and a business, you know, that employs hundreds of people, 
and then be held at the mercy of another company that just right. decides we're not going to publish. You know, we're not going to print anything. This we're not going to send know? anything out to. to yeah, the- George is at the sniffles. So you know, out of fear of Corona, we're going to shut down for two weeks and thus shut down a couple of industries. Mm-hmm. You know, from being able to distribute. So you know, okay, we weathered that. We dealt with that. Um, now that. Or, or seemingly over as as close to over as as you know as we're going to get for the time being. We have to look to the viability of our own company. You know, yeah. we have to look at our own ability to to stay in business. You know, barring any kind of natural disasters or or in spite of any kind of natural disasters. So, obviously, this is a um, this is a liability. This is this is a a serious. Uh, infringement on our ability to make revenue right so we got to find a way around it and they did and this is what we were talking about for weeks after when when the thing uh, happened for the first time in the first place they should have had contingency plans in place to be able to print or move on even um before the crisis came along yeah um you know to let one company have a monopoly on whether or not other companies can even do their business is a crazy system. It really is a crazy system. It is, um, and it's, it's one that um, you know people are now wondering: like, is Marvel going to follow suit? Is they should. I don't know but, if they. I don't know if you cut ties with Diamond altogether, but you find alternatives, and then yeah, you so alter your deals. You know. I was reading that, about this too, and they said that basically uh, this is not something that caught people by surprise. A, obviously, DC set this up because of covid but then also marvel has also switched their entire catalog online as well too and it was actually something that was criticized um when they did it a few years ago because people were worried that well now that they're going to be on online retailers are going to get used to going online people are going to get used to going online and that's going to undercut you know the the comic book retailers because they're going to get used to being doing things digital and they're going to have their catalogs out there Um, but it's also could be a precursor to them you know not using diamond either um the biggest loser in this is diamond because they're not they're not going to be carrying dc books good the second biggest loser in this and i only say that because there is you know look their change is tough is the retailers because now they're going to have to leave their comfort zone so um this this is from the beat from uh, heidi mcdonald's uh, wonderful website which you guys should all check out it's really great um she wrote, uh, what did she write here? I have it here somewhere. Uh, that basically retailers were complaining, you know, before diving into the responses to the DC Diamond split, um, fundamentally, this is a head snapper. For years, people have been complaining that Diamond is a monopoly, a benevolent, benevolent monopoly that bails out shops and publishers alike, but a monopoly is usually a bad thing. Uh, perhaps as proof of the proverb that comic retailers like to complain, these years of complaints about Diamond, complaints I've heard publicly and privately, have changed to the devil you know. Maybe the updated proverb is retailers hate change. I think that kind of sums this up pretty pretty adequately. And you well, know, you know, I don't you don't want to be callous about like people who are going to lose their their stores and they're going to lose not. their livelihood, you know, and they're, or they're going to have to cut staff and fire people. And you know, some there's going to be loss from this. There are going to be people who lose, mm-hmm. um, and that's never a good thing. When people lose, it's never a good thing, right? Um, but the industry has been on the verge of sea change for years. You know, how long have we been in the periphery of the industry? Mm-hmm. How long have they been talking about like these changes that are coming along? How long have they been talking about the fact that it's collapsing? How long that they've been saying these things pretty much since we got here. Right. right? And it's, it's kind of a, mutual destri- mutually assured destruction system that they all had you know right. that, look nobody's bucking the trend we're not going to be the ones to buck the trend if this is you know if this is the industry standard if diamond is the industry standard then we just need to do what we can to to be in bed with diamond right and we you know so no one's going to and, and no one knew who comes along and says, well I'm going to sidestep diamond I'm not going to use diamond and then they levy their control against you they, they, they control where you can distribute your, your work. They control what retailers, whether or not the retailers want to buy your work from whatever, whatever other printer. I mean, there's a, 
you know, there's a, there's a complex network of things that go on that make that, that kind of enforce the monopoly of diamond, but DC left DC left pretty much probably. And this is only speculation because a viable contract was broken when diamond shut down. Diamond shut down and DC were found out through no fault of their own. They're shut down. And then they decided, we can't do this. It's, yeah. it's, it's plain logic. I, you know, I cannot do this. It's like, it's like you're the, you know, the, the fuse box at your house in your neighbor's house, you know, on yeah. any, any, at any step, they could just turn the power off to your house. You know, now your neighbors are cool people. The, you know, they, they acknowledge the, the anomalous, like, construction decision that, that, that made it uh, the way it is. They swear they're going to defend that, you know, that switch at all costs, and they're not going to mess with it. Yeah. But you would be foolish to accept the situation as it stands. You know, you want to be, you own your house, you want to be mm -hmm. in control of the power that comes in and out of your house. Yeah. That's just a simple thing. It's just like that with, uh, with, with any business. Mm -hmm. You want to control the revenue that you make as, as right. to, as to whatever level you can control su such a thing, right? The market's already going to rip you to shreds, you know, just by, uh, just by competition, just about the viability of whatever your product is and how strong your, your marketing uh, sense is, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole lot of reasons and mm -hmm. pitfalls where you could fall apart. The one thing you don't want to have to worry about is the people who are supposedly your partners, you know, deciding that they, they don't want any skin in the game anymore. You right. know, because of whatever happens. It's, it's an absurd uh, arrangement. It's an absurd system. And it, I mean, look, bad things are going to come of it because of the drasticness, you mm -hmm. know, that, that caused the thing to happen in the first place. But it, it really has to happen if the industry is to do anything, you know, innovative well, it's on. interesting, too, that she said that, too, because um, there's a, a Breathing Cool had a great article that said, um, you know, uh, DC leaves diamond and the world still spins. You know, the earth still continues to revolve. Um, and they had a retailer kind of give his assessment of things that wasn't the usual thing. He goes, you know, now it was a shock to the system when we first heard about it. Um, but um, basically, he was talking about how you know, I understand the feelings. New things can be scary and even hard. They might work and they might not. Sticking with the tried and true is not only easier, but it carries it with it less risk. Um, and he talked about the idea of, you know, some stores having to get shipping from another distributor is actually uh, a deterrent for making money for them. Um, but it makes perfect sense that it's also true that the comics industry can improve and grow without change. Complacency leads to stagnation. The shops stay the same, so the fans stay the same, so the stories themselves stay the same. Eventually, that spells the demise of the entire industry, and no one involved wants that. Not Diamond, not DC. Uh, there are no and there, there, and everybody's already talking about that, right? Everybody's right. talking about the, how stale the stuff has become, how stagnant everything is. Everything is very samey. Everything is, you know, nothing's going anywhere, nobody. Or the, the fact that no matter what change has, uh, has occurred, whether you like it or not, you know, you got to wait five minutes. They're going to reboot everything. You know, we're already dealing with uh, with a, a, a crisis of innovation in the industry yeah. in and of itself. You know, so this could spark a number of things. You yeah. know, I mean, as well as or, or including, excuse me, the destruction of the industry in and of itself. You know, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean right. It, it, it look, it doesn't mean everything's going to turn out okay. Obviously, anything yeah. can happen, but um, but yes. it definitely is something that um, but bears watching. Uh, one other thing that uh, Heidi McDonald kind of spoke about in her column, uh, John Jackson Miller, who by the way is a is a numbers guy, and he's a he he he's he reports about the comic sales and things like that. He's also a one time writer of Iron Man. I always I always remember that because I was at Wizard World Chicago when they introduced him, Joe Quesada, in his Marvel panel, introduced him as the new writer of Iron Man. He made Iron Man the Secretary of State. That was his... Uh, oh, that, that was, was his, his contribution. Yeah, his plot line. Okay. Um, but he connects some very interesting darts, uh, dots regarding back issues. Many people were surprised by Steve Geppi's fascination with back issues during his recent press tour, and Miller suggests this may be part of a larger plan. A non-returnable comic book becomes a back issue the second it reaches a retailer store. There's nothing stopping Diamond from obtaining DC Comics on the secondary market in bulk 
and making them available to other retailers. It's exactly the business DCBS and Midtown are in, only they sell to consumers as well. Diamond already carries collectible comics that have gone through the hands of a third party before. Uh, think about Dynamic Force signed editions. So there would be very little in the way of Diamond launching a category making DC making comics DC has already sold to retailers available to its own shops as back issues. It's speculation, but make no mistakes. There's 80 years of history behind the idea that once a comic book has been purchased, it could be resold anywhere and to anyone. Comics are absolutely tradable commodities. Even Diamond would then be forced to innovate and forced to do stuff. I mean, look, COVID happens. My wife and I are working from home. Things that we've been putting off doing around the house, we're doing around the house now. Uh, you know, making changes around the house that we that we wanted to. We wouldn't have done it had had we not been home uh, fi- trying to figure out a schedule to work while, you know, taking care of the kids. We had childcare for that. Anytime there's a disruption in your daily routine, there's going to be, you know, innovation. I mean, that's why the, you know, the mother of all, what is it? The nece- necessity is the mother of all invention. I mean, you know, so, so in a way, this is interesting. The only thing that I'm curious about, and I think for us, as a group, but I think Kickstarter kind of eliminates this as a question, right? Diamond was your only way to get into comic book stores unless you called the stores directly, right? And distributed to them directly uh, if you're an indie book. Uh, yeah. Diamond, Diamond gave you the, the credentials of going through a gatekeeper, being approved. It wasn't, you know, they weren't just going to put any indie book in there. It had, to, it had to meet a certain standard of art and quality, which I like. I mean, everyone kind of knocks on that. Uh, but, but those people probably didn't get into Diamond. I didn't get into Diamond at first. When Sire was was first released after college, it was called Crossfire, and they rejected it because the art wasn't good enough. And you can you can be pissy about it, and you can be huffy about it, but you could sit there and really evaluate your work and say, "Yeah, is this really professional or not? You know, would someone really pick this up or look at it like?" But an that's that's for you. Project? See, that's the thing. That should be for you to decide, right? That should should be for you to decide. I need to get my work. It should be for the market. The market's supposed to decide that whether your work is good enough. Well, that's, not, that's what Diamond was. Not Diamond your publisher. Was, Diamond no, was Diamond's a, not the marketer. No, but Diamond's he's not. not the, but but they but they it, but by putting your book in, if it's not up to a certain quality level, and not story wise, story you know story wise, I don't think they you know. But if it doesn't look professional, it's not going to sell. So why would they why would they carry something that's not going to sell? Because right? you're paying them. I mean, I guess so, but it's not also, a charity. It's like it's like they 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 evaluate you for the honor of being able to pay them for a service. You know, I guess so. I, I, I wouldn't look at crazy. it like that though. I, I would look at it like it, you know, if they sold, it's not worth them shipping out four or five books to stores. Yeah, but there, there, there are still bad books out there, right? There's still, yeah, yeah. there's still. So then, I mean, the, the, the quality of the standard of quality is, is malleable, right? It's not as, it's, it, it is subjective to a point, but I think it's like, exactly. point, right? like what the judge said. He's like, I, I can't tell you what it is, but I know it when I see it. I mean, like I, we know you and I, I both disagree know. with you. We've had conversations. You can look at a book and no, yeah, no, but I, I disagree with who should be able to make that decision for you. I do agree. Well, there's nothing there's, stopping, but that's the thing. There's nothing stopping an indie book from calling up retailers individually and saying, would you like to carry mine on consignment? Would you I, like to I, this? Underst- I you get that? that. I get that. But you obviously, there's a problem with that, right? Because that hasn't happened more rampantly, right? Yeah. Everybody tries to go through Diamond because Diamond has, you know, Diamond has um, arms and legs mm-hmm. throughout the, you know, through their monopoly has arms and legs throughout the industry, right? Yeah. So, um, and then on top of it, it's a service that you have to pay them and then they're going to get paid off of the distribution of your work. Well, you're not After paying you pay them, them specifically. You're just giving them a discount on your book. Like you put your, you put your cover price at X, and they take you know they take sixty percent, then they sell it to retailers for thirty percent. They make their thirty percent cut. The retailers make their thirty percent cut, maybe forty percent. Um, which is why how retailers, if you have a pull list, can offer you like a ten or twenty percent discount. Um, it cuts into their margins, but it gives them guaranteed income. Um, I mean, look I, again. I think we're kind of getting off the off the topic a little bit. It's just a curio- It's curious to see. That if Diamond falls, you know, or is seriously hampered because they lost thirty percent of the distribution now with DC, um, you know, what happens to the to the rest of the comic book publishers? You know, it, if Marvel That's decides why the to system jump shouldn't ship, have been the system was unsustainable from the from the first place. All it took right. was someone to come along and be like, "I'm not doing this," you right. know. But they had to be big enough. 
Right. I mean, your system is pretty bad when one, when, when any one of the three or four partners can jackknife the entire ordeal, you know? Of course. And so, I mean, I think, I think no matter what happened, mm-hmm. Diamond should have stayed in business. Diamond should not have closed down for COVID. It, I think it's going to cost them. Yeah. I well, think they, they should have, I, already I think have. they should have, they find, they should have found out, found a way. They should have taken the responsibility. They should have stayed open, even with the skeleton crew. Yeah. Everybody socially distancing and everything else, right? Because they proved that once they were gone, the world didn't end, and that was the biggest problem. Yeah. That was the monster. They 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 proved that the that that Sasquatch does not exist, right? So you yep. can you can wander around the woods all you want. You're not going to get killed by the abominable snowman because he doesn't exist. And that it, that myth has kept Diamond on top for decades. And they they kind of played themselves with that move. Well, we'll we'll see how it uh, how it plays off over the coming weeks. This is going to be a DC heavy uh, show, by the way, because we've got uh, this news as well. DC Daily has been canceled by the DC Universe streaming service and is preparing to air its final batch of shows over the next few weeks. Uh, this is from Collider. It premiered in 2018 of September of 2018, offering DC fan news, interviews, and in-depth panel discussions about DC movies and TV shows. Uh, It featured a diverse range of knowledgeable hosts over the years. Uh, After 400 episodes, DC Daily will air its final broadcast on Friday, July 3rd. Uh, From Collider, it's their understanding DC Daily is the cheapest show to produce on the DC Universe streaming service, but ultimately it could not overcome the production challenges presented by the coronavirus pandemic. that's what some people say, and then other people are wondering, you know, how much the merger with AT and T is really kind of playing into all this. And again, the change is scary kind of notion. Are these are these little warning signs? Are these like little cracks in the in the in the uh, foundation? I guess is what people are kind of wondering. Well, maybe you know, maybe them leaving Diamond is a, a precursor to the fact that they're just going to close down altogether. You know, could they? Maybe everything's falling apart. I mean, they're they were they've been doing these giant. Um, you know, it could be the death of periodicals. Uh, that's what people are worried about. The the daily, you know, the monthly single issues in print. And quite frankly, it wouldn't shock me if that is what ends up happening. I mean, the, the retailers themselves. I don't know how. I don't know how any retailer forget forget just comic book retailers can survive. Yeah. I mean, even you and I were talking off air about how, you know, this, this pandemic has now gotten us even more used to just shopping online and, you know, being able to just, you know, get stuff into instantaneously. My kids, you know, for the most part, you know, we try to keep them off phones and screens and we do a really good job of it, to be honest with you, but even they're still used to like, Hey, I want to hear that song again. Okay, great. I'm going to, you know, just, just the ability to easily play uh, to easily find children's music versus like when we were kids and had to go buy CDs or records or whatever the case is and just skip to the song you want to hear creates this sense of immediacy that uh, monthly periodicals having to go into the store and pick up the books and do all this stuff. You know, we'll see. We'll yeah. see what ends up happening. All right. Nostalgia aside, when we come back, we get nostalgic. Bill and Ted back. Bill and Ted 3, teaser trailer, trailer truth or trash, when we come back. Welcome back to the Rogue Wave Podcast, talking comics, movies, TV, and pop culture every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Go to roguewavepodcast.com for more. All right. It dropped. Finally, some new content. I, first of all, before we even get into the trailer, isn't it like a relief Like when something new for like something coming out later you know, drops? Part of me is almost like, how'd they film that? And then I realized like, they filmed it like last year. Um, but the Bill and Ted three trailer dropped it was a teaser trailer i know david s rosen david rosenberg on on facebook um likes to make sure that i he points out it's just a teaser trailer shouldn't get too excited about anything that being said i posted on facebook facebook.com slash roguewave podcast i was a little disappointed and i don't mean it in any sense of the story 
I don't mean it in any sense of, you know, what I, what I speculate. I, it just left me sad. It was sad. You know, you know, like when you get a little, when you get older and you, you see some people from high school and they haven't changed and they kind of look exactly the same, you just kind of get a little sad. You're like, oh, oh man. I, seeing Keanu Reeves and Alex Winters, but being really super old, just kind of made me sad. Like this, it didn't, I don't know. There was something about it where I'm sitting there going like, I don't need this movie. I like, I know we talk about that. Like nobody needs anything. I really don't. I don't need Bill and Ted to come back in any way, shape or form. It, it's, it's like watching young, it's like watching old Indiana Jones. I don't, I don't want to see old Indiana Jones. I want to see 30 something Indiana Jones. I don't want to see old Bill and Ted, you know, still, rocking out like it's like going to see the rolling stones when they're in their 70s like after a while you're just kind of like that's just sad i don't know that was my initial reaction to the film hassan yours your uh to the trailer yours was i liked it i thought it was fine you thought it was fine did it yeah did it not- i mean like they 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 obviously it's been almost 30 years so yeah they uh they, they've obviously aged um we i mean we haven't uh we haven't had a uh, a shortage of Keanu Reeves sightings between then and now so i, I know. know what he looked like you know, but you know and Alex Winter pretty look much like that like they look very plastic very like made up and and it just ah man it just it hurt. like it it just okay. again Rachel well, White uh commented she said i thought it was a bit cringe and i said cringe is a good word like you know forget the story forget anything that we saw um just, just the look of it. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Something about it. I almost wish they would have done like their kids or something. You know, just something, something different. Who's the audience for this movie, too? By the way, it's got to be people in our age group, right? In theory, yeah. Right, like no one. And then you know, Keanu Reeves fans and whatever. I mean, sure. And he's going through a Keanu sense, as people have been, you know. You know. Well, it only lasts until one of his movies doesn't do well. Like I'm looking at a lot of the uh, a lot of the reactions. Shaq O'Donnell, who uh, who is famous for being in studio with us, where you use the Jedi mind trick to make him go from loving Last Jedi to hating Last Jedi over the course of one podcast. It was really exciting. Uh, teaser trailer is supposed to hook you. There's definitely a little nostalgia, but not enough to make me go, "Wow, this is a movie I absolutely have to see." And that's coming from somebody who really, really, really wants to see the movie. I kind of did too. Like, I think when I first heard that they were doing Bill and Ted three, um, part of me kind of smiled. Cause I was like, Oh, well, you know, it's Bill and Ted. Like, you know, we're, it, like that's kind of a neat, you know, return. But these movies are always disappointing. I feel like they're never, they're never quite not, not Bill and Ted movies. I mean, anytime you bring back someone from like 20, a, a sequel 20 years ago, very name me a sequel right now. We'll go through some sequels. Name me a sequel that happened 20 years after the fact. And I'm saying 20. I know Bill and Ted's is 30 years after the fact. That was really as good as as the featuring the same actors. Blade Runner. That was good, but what did they do? They brought in Ryan Gosling to be the lead and he and he took up most of the screen time. So I give you, I give you Blade Runner, excellent Blade Runner twenty forty nine. You didn't, you didn't add caveats. I didn't add any caveats. <laughs> just, I'm just saying why, but I'm explaining why I think that is a great choice you, that you picked. Mad Max, maybe Mad Max. Mad Max. Uh, Mad Definitely. Max was great, but it didn't have the original. I mean, the original characters. Tom Hardy was recast. So you just Mel- don't like old people in your movies. That's. Old. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I definitely don't. Okay. I definitely don't. I don't. I don't gotcha. like them. I don't like them when they try to use them in the same way. That they did. How do you know how they're going to use them now? Well, because they basically explained in the teaser trailer that it's. No, they didn't explain you know, anything in the teaser trailer. Really you, you, your song you just was spent. To, your song you was just supposed spent, to unite us. It didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, how's that? And then, and they didn't live up to the potential. Yes. I mean, how, how else is that supposed to go? I mean, you don't know. You just, you know what the premise is. You don't know what the. You don't know what the story is. You don't know what happens. You don't know who those characters are. You don't know anything about it. It doesn't give you any information. Now, look, you saw the, you saw the teaser and uh, you weren't impressed. Okay, 
That's how that happened. I got sad. I got sad. Okay. All right. But that doesn't mean anything because you haven't seen anything. You don't know anything. You just sure. don't and, like and what you saw. in they could CGI up Keanu and, and, and Alex Winter so that they're not as... They're not going to because I think the whole point is that they're old. You know, you just have to get over either don't go see it or you got to get over the, your, your old-ish ism thing. That's all. Yeah, there are you're old saying, people you're saying it's a me movies. Thing. You're saying it's a me thing that I have uh, a problem. I'm not saying it's a you. Th- Look in the in the in the course of this conversation, in the context of you and I talking about what you liked and what you didn't like. Yeah, yeah, it's a you thing. It's totally it ain't a me thing. thing. Gotcha. It, it's not me, but I don't know. <laughs> who who you. knows? It's not um, you. It's me. You better believe it's me. If anybody, it's, it's, me. it's you. I mean, I'm not. I don't really have a problem with it. Now, look, if the movie comes out and it's terrible, then I will have a problem with it. I'm like, I don't think they should have done this. This is terrible. But for right now, I don't know anything about it. Brian Everham commented. Brian Everham, friend of the show. Uh, honestly, I thought Alex Winter was fine, but Ken looked out of place. His facial expressions, the way he spoke, seemed more like Too John much Wick. Scrutiny Ted. on it. I mean, the whole point is they're supposed to look. They're supposed to be like that. They were. They were wanna be hipsters. They were who, who, who aged into into I wannabe know. hipsters. You know, like I, know. I think the whole uh, point is how stagnant they are. I don't. I don't. Okay. All right. In the preview, Keanu seemed way too serious and stiff. Of the two actors, I never thought he would be the problem. That was right. my impression when I watched it. A minute and twenty-one I seconds. Agree. Yeah, but there's a minute and twenty-one okay. seconds of like okay. horror. I understand. Horror. Don't go see it. <laughs> Well, I'm still gonna go see it because it's, it's the else. thing. I understand what you're saying, but the things that people are complaining about are all superficial. They're yes. all like shallow and superficial. Yes, absolutely. So this is why I'm not paying any. I give it no credence. I don't know what the film is gonna be. You know, I don't know what it's about. I don't know if it's a good or bad idea. Now, the other thing I'll say is that though I love the first two movies yeah. when I was younger, um. I'm not a leg- legacy hound to the point where this movie is going to ruin the legacy of the other two movies. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't bother me. I, so you know what? if right. this movie comes out and it's terrible, I'm, I'm going to be pretty much the same I am right now. It's gonna, my world will not have changed. Well, let me It'll ask just you be question. like, I can watch these two movies and then I can stop I'm gonna it. Call, I'm going to call Fallon. Just, gonna like, call just like Star Wars, well, I'll I was just about stop to at the sixth Wars. one. I'm and then up- that's, that's it. And then there are no more Star Wars. I, but that's what I'm that. saying. I'm bringing up. I'm bringing up uh, Star Wars because you said exactly that. The new sequels did not, you know, did not need to finish a story that was already finished. But then they ended up ruining the story that that we had seen. I didn't ruin. I I didn't say they ruined it. I feel like you did. I yeah. You feel like I did, but I didn't. And we're not dealing with your feelings. <laughs> we're talking about me. I don't feel they ruined Star Wars. Star Wars, as it, wherever I decide to cut Star Wars is, uh, off in my world, is my business. If I decide yeah. that Star Wars doesn't go any further than Return of the Jedi, including the, the prequels, episodes one to six, if I decide that Star Wars and that Star Wars, I'm still good, right? When we, uh, I we did don't Temple feel that the new that the sequels ruined the saga. Right. I think that sequels weren't good movies, personally. Right. Uh, and then they, you know, they made poor additions to the saga. Yeah, I don't think they added anything, but they certainly, I, I will not allow that they have taken anything away. When so the we same with- uh, did our Temple of Doom retro review, it didn't yeah. ruin. Yes, Crystal Skull doesn't ruin uh, Raiders or Temple of Doom or Last Crusade. I mean, Temple of Doom might have ruined it for Temple of Doom for some people when when we did our retro review. But it didn't help. Like, it definitely didn't help. I don't know. Like, I, there's part of me that just sits there and says, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, let's say, I mean, look, of course, it's not life or death. I get it. But I don't know. All right. Trailer truth or trailer trash as to how good the movie's going to be. Uh, was this teaser trailer trailer truth for you that it's going to be good or trailer trash that this movie is going to be oh trash? Oh, my God. I just spent like 10 minutes telling you I don't know. Well, I know, but so how would I speculate on that? I, I know, actually, I know that's your setup, but but I didn't actually ask you. Now I did. But it's redundant because we already gave we've we've both already given our. I'm going to say it's it. trailer truth. I don't think this movie's going to be very good. My reaction to the trailer is that this movie is not going to be. Well, great. How, wait, how does truth and trash work? Because shouldn't trash be like the trailer is trash and it's not indicating badness? How can that be a trailer truth? 
if I'm you think saying, it's not going to work. I'm saying that I'm poo-pooing the trailer altogether. And so the trash, the trash for me would be if, if my review is trash. And what? it turns out to be a good movie. <laughs> you like what I did there, right? No. <laughs> I like I'm glad. Your, Hassan, I like keeping No, you're your not. Toes. No, you're not. I need to keep <laughs> you on your toes. I am not. It is not contingent on you keeping me on my toes. Complacency toe. is Trust the me. of our I have show. never been complacent in my life. Don't you worry, young man. Um, right, go, go, go. I think the oh, okay. You know, no, I, say, I was trying to help you out, but go ahead. I don't think uh, I don't think we know enough to know. So I I, I claim neither truth nor trash. Right, so don't the trailer does not when the trailer comes out, yeah, then I'll then I'll the be able. The trailer to, does not give you enough to determine a truth. There's not trash. enough at all. But there's enough to, that I'm interested said, to see where they're going and why they thought it was necessary. If I had a gun now. to your head right now and said, you have to pick one. I'd punch you in the face and take your, your prediction gun away. Is, your prediction is that the movie is going to be... This is just the prediction business, my man. It's not like... <sighs> no one's going to cancel you over this. I you mean, know what could. I would say? Shoot me. <laughs> and take a murder rap because of Bill and <laughs> I think you're going to think this movie is going to be good. I'm going to say... I don't know. I honestly... There was nothing in it. There was nothing there. The there, there was literally nothing there. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that told us is that they didn't live up to the potential that they were supposed to. I didn't quite get that last scene either where they ended up with the... People are all buff and... It was weird, man. It was... Just, I don't know. Because they went whole, into a different... They went into an alternate future. Yeah, I know. It was just... It was weird, man. It was just like the whole... The whole thing was just... It's just really off-putting. Really? More off footing when they went to hell, <laughs> you know, or went to heaven and there were aliens in heaven. I mean, yeah. the whole series, you got to take the whole series for the absurdity that it is. You I know, can still watch that first one and, uh, and be pretty cool with that. Uh, real quick before we go, um, okay. I, I didn't even realize this. And, and then Fabian Nicieza, uh, again, friend of the show, scolded me for this for not knowing. Uh, did you know there was an Eisner nominated? 12 issue series by Evan Dorkin. No, I did not. Yeah. I saw that too. It's been republished by Boom Studios. Um, Philip Sablik is also a friend of the show. We love that. We've had him on before. We'll have him on again uh, from Boom. I need to find a way to make money off of me uh, promoting this for them, but I haven't yet because, (laughs) you know. But um, I was like, I was kind of like surprised at that. And then Fabian, so Fabian actually kind of went into detail about like the behind the scenes because he edited the book. And he said that once Bill and Ted 2 tanked the box office, um, they let them do whatever they want with the comic. Like they were very, very on them at first because it was, mm-hmm. it was leading up to Bill and Ted 2. And then once Bill and Ted 2 didn't do very well at the box office, they left them alone. And Evan wrote this like great book. He said Tom DeFalco said it was the best non-Marvel book they ever published at Marvel. <laughs> and apparently so because it was Eisner nominated. So go Did you ever it. watch the cartoon? You know, I feel like I did. I feel like it was fun, right? It was like Saturday morning cartoon. I definitely did. Yeah, yeah. it was morally based. It was uh, primarily based on the first one. Yeah, you know, it wasn't. As it should, wasn't as the they, as it I think been. it was. It, okay, it was prior to. Uh, it was. I think it takes place between the first and the second one. The cartoon. Yeah. No, it was. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You know, again, it was. It was a fun thing, like an animated movie. Totally. Get. I can totally get behind. Have their Have their voices come in. Totally get behind it. Well, you're an ages, so age. you know you got to work on that. Not good, not good. All right, when we come back, we go spinning the racks. Welcome back to the Rogue Wave Podcast, talking comics, movies, TV, and pop culture. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, go to roguewavepodcast.com to subscribe. We are big fanboys of comics and graphic novels, and every week we like to bring you the inside info and the source material that will make its way onto the large and small screen. We call this segment Spinning the Racks. Spin the Rack, Spin the Rack, Spin the 
I'll say it again. I I got very good at this, and this one's for the audience. See, that's very good. Yes, spin that racks, spin those racks. Uh, for her 80th anniversary, Catwoman had a bat baby. No, seriously. Uh, back in February, when the world was different, Batman scribe Tom King tweeted a tease of an upcoming story: a wordless image of Batman and an incredibly pregnant Catwoman embracing on top of a gargoyle, like the world's most leather-clad maternity announcement. Uh, this is from Polygon. Uh, speculation took off. Was this a dream sequence? Was this real? Was it something from his upcoming Batman Catwoman series? Uh, the story turned out to be an eight page feature called Helena in this week's Catwoman 80th anniversary, 100 page, super spectacular. Uh, it takes place in an alternate timeline featured in King's extensive run on Batman in which Batman and Catwoman marry, become a crime fighting team and live to grow old and die of totally mundane things like cancer. In the middle of all that, the two superheroes oh, have a super baby. mundane. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it's Jesus. It's not like the Joker gave him the cancer, or maybe he did. Who knows? Well, I mean, one day you can't call cancer mundane, but all right, all right. Last week's Catwoman 80th anniversary special ran Selena Kyle through many versions of herself that included a trip, uh, courtesy of Tom King, Mikhail Janin, and Jordi Belair, to the version of her life seemingly abandoned by DC Comics. Um, one that also tied in with Tom King and Lee Week's Batman Annual Two, that told the first days of Batman and Catwoman together to their last and the death of Bruce Wayne. Along the way, we also meet the new Batwoman daughter of Bruce and Selina. So some cool things going on. A um, lot of different, a lot of writers on this one too. The 80th, the 80th anniversary of Catwoman, Ed Brubaker, Paul Dini, Tom King, Anne Nocenti. Oh man, haven't heard her name in a long, long time. Uh, Will Pfeiffer, uh, Mindy Newell and others. Um, Adam Hughes, Lee Weeks, uh, Steve Rude, Jim Ballant. Oh man. Jim Ballant used to draw Catwoman way, way back in the day. I'm not sure what ever happened to him, but I guess he's still doing some Catwoman stuff as well, too. Uh, a real who's who for DC celebrating all this stuff. So, first of all, I'm curious with the Pattinson movie coming out, uh, and, it, and it kind of, you know, it's going to feature Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. I mean, I think you can tell DC's really building up, you know, the Batman Catwoman brand. Utter speculation. I'm not going to hold you to anything. I have to say that because otherwise you get very nervous. How much of this is going to spill out into the movies, you think? I, I, I actually have a strong, like if I was, I have a strong feeling it's going to. Okay. I mean, there's been so many iterations of Batman, you know? Yeah. I mean, look at Birds of Prey, the TV right. show, which is Batman's daughter. You know, there's, there've right. been so many iterations of this particular storyline. Sure, they will. It doesn't matter if it trickles into the movies. They're going to change the movies in about five years anyway. It's going to be a completely different Batman. It's like James Bond. You know, it's like yeah. it, everything that happened really won't have mattered because yeah. of the new guy's going to come on. The whole thing will be rebooted. The Waynes will be killed again, you know, and then, then we'll, we're going to go on whatever new adventure we're going to go on. You know, it's funny because I guess comics have always been like this, even go, going back to like the 70s, 80s, and 90s, where you know, change happens, but then it's kind of temporary change because the idea is you got you constantly have to keep putting, you know, resetting the main hero back to square one. You know, the only book that never really did that was Savage Dragon. He literally kills Savage Dragon, I think, in issue 100. And then his son takes over, and his son has been the Savage Dragon ever since. Like, it's never been a, a case of, you know, so he's actually progressed the story to go along with it. But obviously the big two, you know, don't have that luxury necessarily i mean they can they can find ways to do it um and uh and they basically you know kind of have to reset and put the and put the reset button but it felt different when you were kids i don't know it felt it felt as if things that were happening were canon and it was going to be set in stone i feel like i remember those marvel because when we were kids things were canon and they usually stayed the way they were for a long time that's what I'm saying. For a long time, like reboots to me, unless it's maybe again, I mean, is it my adult black brain? suit. Spider Man had his black suit for like f <laughs> almost five years. Right. That's a long, that's a, that's an eternity. Right. In comic book era. Yeah. You know? Wolverine went went from yellow suit to brown suit back to yellow suit, and the yellow suit lasted for another ten years. Yeah, that's a long the time. Back to brown suit. Which is yeah. which is the superior? Because you get tired, costume. and then you, you run out of ideas when you start switching costumes out. You know, yeah. there's the same same as when they give Angel his wings back. It's like, okay, you, you guys have that. no idea. Oh so you're you're that, done. You you're... hate that so much. I do. I, I despise it. <laughs> <laughs> because of all we had to go through, all the Angel had to go through in the first place when he lost yeah. his wings. 
you know first yeah. he got he first they were amputated he freaked out and tr- and and supposedly tried to kill himself right. right and then they gave him new wings you know sadly they turned him blue and made him an agent of uh, chaos but i mean these things happen when you're upset and so they they rehabilitated him he comes back he joins x x factor he's good everything's good yeah. And he's able to to go toe to toe with Wolverine now because he's got right. he's got those razor sharp claws. Yeah, he's got some offensive wings. powers other than being right, able to right. flutter away. Right. And then they just like, ah, let's just take him away. I'm you surprised he just didn't hover character. over people with like anvils and just like dropped like you <laughs> just know, drop anvils like the off. Acme anvils. Like he, that should be that should have been his costume. So, Actually, you know. Physics, like bombs, like they would they hooked onto his they hooked right, onto his I'm wings saying, like, like even, bombs. Even like physics wise, you don't even need you don't even need super big objects if they fall from a great enough height. I mean, like, like no, there's, yeah, poop you that, can, there's poop that comes out of airplanes that kill people. Yeah, you can get terminal velocity. You can you can get right. that, and then you can kill a whole bunch of people with that. We, but we've I mean, reached, look, we've reached a new level on uh, the road. Yeah, podcast. yeah, I, I, you're the one who brought up the turrets. Killer, I mean, killer poop from this guy. If that's you, that's all you. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's. The, these reboots, they're terrible now. You know, yeah. I mean, they are they are literally terrible now. I think um, it's like I said about Spider Man, Spider Man is. I just saw like I just read an article about Spider Man. Spider Man had his black suit. They gave him the black suit, right? And yeah. It was a contest. Kid kid won a contest. He designed a new suit. He said Spider Man should be stealth. They put Spider Man in a stealth suit, mm-hmm. right? Basically, you know. Long story short, the fans hate it. Right? Oh, that's not Spider-Man. Give him Spider- and then by the time they, they, they worked on a storyline to right. kind of get him out of the suit, which was the symbiote, they turned, you know, they, they, they uh, started building the alien, the symbiote as an alien entity that was actually manipulating Peter P- uh, Parker yeah. and, you know, destroying him very slowly. And then he got it. He had to get himself away from it. He mm-hmm. got out of the suit. He got, you know, and it was like, okay, now he's going to go back into the red and black suit. But by that time, they got him out of that suit. But by the time they got rid of the symbiote, the fans loved it again. Right. And I was like, oh, I really like the new Spider-Man. I, I really like the, the black right. suit. So that's when he got himself up, you know, and he made himself an actual costume of the black suit. And that lasted maybe, maybe another year or so. And the only reason it stopped, from what I heard, is that Todd McFarlane got, he didn't want to draw it. <laughs> he became when he became the prominent artist for sure. for uh, uh, Amazing Spider-Man. He just I don't want to do this, so um, I switch it back. Yeah, and then I think Spider-Man three hundred. They they switched the the costume back, and he never looked back again. So I mean, now they 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 swap out his costumes all the time. Now they, sure. they mess with his costumes all the time. He's like Batman. He's got to like you or Iron Man. Well, that's like, like the like immediacy a, a, thing, right? I mean, you just yeah. you, you you know people people are not patient anymore. People are don't let things kind of sit. And it also kind of goes back to our original conversation today. You know, change, man. People people fear change. Nobody likes it. I mean, nobody likes it at all. And I get it, and I understand it. And they, I mean, you cannot dictate to people what they should or shouldn't like because that's it. It is a subjective thing. It, it hits yeah. them the way it hits them, which is why I don't. You know, I don't woke scold you about being an ageist. You know, if that's not what you want in movies, that's not what you want in movies. I just don't think you should review movies with old people because you got kind of a bias. But I mean, the fact that you, you got know, that bias, thing. I don't. That's it's okay. Really that's all right people. for you to have. It's it's yeah, like it's when people. you have heroes you like that you grew up seeing. Yeah, but that, that's the problem. It's like everybody grows up. That's everybody the thing. Gets like old. I don't mind Keanu Reeves and John Wick. I think that's awesome. Because a new character. That's I what I'm see, talking about. I don't see so my then what's the problem? I'm an ageist for characters. I don't want characters to age to a point where they become unrecognizable to me. Then or, you shouldn't be the, you shouldn't be the guy they send think, to review those I movies. I take that back, though. I take that back completely because here's the thing. If Indiana Jones what the thing is. and if Bill and Ted didn't try to look exactly like they did when they were older, if they had progressed past what they were when they were younger... You know, that's what I. Then you I, would be saying he didn't see. look like Indiana Jones. No, I would not. You have no idea what I would say because we have. I do. Seen him. I know exactly what you would say. It's you like, say like he, now he doesn't Sean look Connery like Indiana Jones. Crusade. He doesn't Sean feel Connery like Indiana was Jones. Was awesome in Last Crusade, and he, but he wasn't playing James Bond. He was playing Indiana Jones' dad, and and he was supposed to be older. Yeah, he was. And, yeah, but and I mean, he, he you you also didn't have a nostalgic attachment to him because he wasn't any of the character. He was he was playing a character for the first time. I agree. I know because I'm right. I'm just saying. 
I if think. Uh, abuse, that's all. I mean, you gotta deal with it. It's not wrong. I mean, there's no hate crimes or anything like that. You can feel that way if you want. But that's just we, we bottom line, got, it's just kind of an ages, you know. And then maybe you got, shouldn't review these movies because you're. We've an got some awesome things coming up in the next few weeks uh, on the Rogue Wave podcast besides our new set that we're, we're building out as we speak. Uh, it's all leading up to July 1st, which will be an awesome event for us. Uh, we can finally kind of pull the curtain back on all the cool changes that have happened to our podcast over the past year. And uh, we've got some great guests coming up and some great news and just a whole bunch of cool things. That being said, next week, we'll piece together some more stuff off of the news of the day because news is happening all the time um look forward to the end of this month though gonna be some some cool stuff coming around anything to add to that hassan or nope nothing sign up. <laughs> we're gonna sign off on this note all right guys we will see you everyone be safe week Rogue Wave.